Well, folks, I think I've made a lot of progress on my blotter problem. Now, just to recap where I've gone through this, this do-all grinder that I have has a feature or a hub that is called a cool grind hub. And this is one half of it. And this hub has small holes around the outer diameter. It has, and these holes go through the, the flange to the other side. And then it has a lip right here that forces liquid as it spins around to go into those holes. Well, this one was completely clogged up. Every single hole, and there's 40 of them, was clogged on both sides. Each flange is a mirror image of each other. So I read in the literature that these hubs must be used with a perforated blotter. Well, I could not find what a perforated blotter looked like. I looked and I looked and I looked. There's been a breakthrough on that part. Now, I had a question on whether the paper label on the CGW or WCW, uh, anyway, a wheel manufacturer in Israel, the machine came with a 12-inch wheel on it. I couldn't read it or anything until I got this hub broken apart. It kind of rusted a little bit and couldn't break it easily. But I finally worked it loose. When I took it loose, you could see the grit part of the wheel not covered by the label. That's what I'm calling it, a label. It had a ring where this part of the flange was covering it but not touching that paper label or blotter. I think that's what led to all those holes being so clogged up. So, luckily today, one of the viewers sent me a picture of an actual in-the-wild do-all wheel with a perforated blotter on it. Oh boy, I measured the label that's on that wheel in there, and both on the new one and the one that I, uh, the new one I bought, a 14 inch and the 12 inch was on there, and they measured nine thousandths of an inch thick. And frankly, the OSHA requirements about blotters, and every wheel is supposed to have one, and frankly, if you get caught without one, you could be in trouble and, and they fit on both flanges and they say it's a material made out of compressible material and that's what got me to thinking that piece of paper in there that's nine thousandths of an inch thick what's so compressible about that i mean it's paper thin a piece of uh Typing papers, three to four thousandths of an inch thick. Blotters, and this is the uh, OSHA website. Compressible washers shall always be used between flanges and abrasive wheel surfaces to ensure uniform distribution of flange pressure. And basically, you know, an abrasive wheel. It's probably not going to be able to be manufactured within thousandths of an inch. So you may have a little thicker on one side of the wheel or, or, or a bump or something like that. And the blotter is supposed to be there to be able to even that out, to spread the force of the flange against the uneven wheel. So that's where I don't think that label of nine thousandths of an inch of really already compressed paper is going to do any good. It's also an important part in driving that wheel. The, the blotter actually adds friction to spin that, to, to lock that wheel onto the hub so it spins right. I don't think that paper does a very good job of it. So I've been doing a lot more work. I've been looking a lot of different places. 
This is uh, Magnematic.com. Shows all kinds of things. Blotters, what good are they? Plenty good. The proper use of blotters can aid in preventing wheel breakage. This is the part that I liked. Blotters, by definition, are compressible washers that must be placed between an abrasive wheel and a mounting flange. These blotters are more than just cardboard or paper, but are designed to strict standards of material type, thickness, coefficient of friction, and compressibility. It says don't attempt to make your own by cutting blocker uh, from old paper cartons, sheets of rubber or leather. Use only blotters that are supplied or recommended by the abrasive wheel manufacturer. I've searched. I've looked at McMaster Car, MCS, I, I, Mass Tool here in Houston, uh, other places, and nobody lists blotters for sale on their websites. They all think they come on the wheel already. And these are paper thin labels. I, I don't know if it may be technically okay. But I do know that the paper thin label on my wheels are too small to cover a quarter inch outer diameter of this flange. So I need to do something. And preferably I need a perforated blotter because that's the kind of blotter this recommends. Anyway. There's some good stuff on there. That's uh, M-A-G-N-A-M-A-T-I-C.com. Now, Norton was bought out by the St. Gobin, or Gobbing, Gobain, and they have this on their website. Blotters are function and proper use. Well, going back to the Practical Machinist website where there's a lot of very, very smart and talented people that have been doing this a long time, old grinder hands, said that if you can't buy one, they've always used a beer carton that cans come in to make blotters. And that was kind of what I thought would be good, except I don't drink beer out of cans or anything but fake beer anymore. I use Mountain Dew. So I got my Mountain Dew carton, got it out here, flattened it out, started making me a blotter. Now, the way I did was I took a piece of paper here and took an old musty one hammer type, musty one type hammer, went around this edge on this boss that imprinted a line that I could cut with my razor blade here on the board. I cut that out. That ended me up with this. I then put this on my wheel and went around the outside of the flange. Just like you make a gasket for an engine if you ever made one of those. So now I've got an outer diameter circle. I took my razor blade and I cut it out and pretty soon I ended up with this. I thought, great. But as I was doing this, I kind of thought back and I went back to this site and was reading some more and I was scrolling down on the page and they had some pictures. I like pictures. This one got me. Concentrated pressure. The blotter impression should be even and not indicate concentrated flange pressure. Figure 2 shows a segment blotter with a sharp indentation on the bottom side. This condition caused the segment to crack. Well, I'm looking at this blotter that somebody made, and I'm looking here, and I'm not really sure, but that sure looks a heck of a lot like my piece of paper does. Even though I had taken my must be one special and ironed that out as best I could, that picture scared me because I do not want one of these coming off. I was a paramedic for a long time. 
I've picked up a lot of people that have been injured in workplace accidents, and I've even picked up a person that a wheel came apart on a bench grinder. It wasn't pretty. I try to learn from other people's misfortunes and mistakes, so that's what that's why I research a lot. So anyway, I had a blotter that I didn't think was any good. So what do I do? I remembered that one of the people on a practical machine says a cereal box works well too. So I got the wife to get me a cereal box. I came out here and I did the same thing here and I put it on there and I cut out a piece. Now it's big enough, there's no creases in here anywhere. Great, now I've got a blotter. But I still didn't know what the heck a perforated blotter was until a viewer sent me this today. This is the only picture I've ever seen, and I've been looking a lot, of a perforated blotter from Do-All. You notice it's got holes around the outside. That's what they're calling perforated. That match up to the holes in this flange. Great. Problem is, do all doesn't make wheels for the machines anymore. They don't even make the machines. So I got to looking at it and it says, you know, I can make that. I've already know how to make this part. I just need to punch 40 holes in the outside of it and we'll be golden. And I said, but that looks so nice and you can tell that's a thicker blotter than nine thousandths. This box is 24 thousandths of an inch thick and it can compress and take up some space. Uh, one viewer wrote me a comment that said uh, blotters are acceptable according to his handbook of uh, up to 1 64th of an inch. So is it better than 9 thousandths? My almost three times better. So I'm comfortable with this. Now, I've got a picture. I know what it is. One of the things that you notice on this wheel is it's very open spacing. And I think this type of wheel was designed so that the fluid could go through those holes and actually course through that grinding wheel. I think it's just open enough matrix in that wheel to let the fluid go through it. Now, I don't know enough about all the different wheels to know if I can even buy a wheel like that. But if I do, I'll have a blotter for it. So, right now my main purpose is to take and keep these holes from getting messed up and this outer flange from touching the abrasive on the wheel. So, I got that covered. But then I said, well, now I've got to make another one. And my brain started going, I wonder how I can make those holes. Well, I cheated. I got on my CAD program, and I, I use Bobcad. Been using it for years. Not that expensive, and I can afford that. Anyway, I drew out a template and I put those holes on it. So now I said, well, I could print that out at a one-to-one -one scale, which I did. And then I said, well, it sure be nice if I could print on that cardboard. So I took the, the, the piece of cardboard and I cut off all the fiddly bits that didn't look anything like an eight and a half by eleven. Came up with this, stuffed it in my Etsy inkjet printer, and I'll be danged if it didn't pick it up and start printing on it. I took that print over here, got my razor blade out, and I cut it out, and this is what I ended up with. All the holes are there. 
I just need to make some kind of punch, like a, a leather punch, and I can pop out 40 holes pretty quick. What do you think? I think I've about got it covered now. I've got a template. I know what the, the, the problem is. Put this on there. We'll go to town. Good day in the workshop. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned everything you'll ever need to know about a blotter. I still don't know everything, but I found you a lot of information if you want to look it up. Thanks for watching. <laughs>